a Bopendra Mirage, and he his uh, title is A Real World Energy and Cost Comparison Between an Electric Vehicle and a Petrol Vehicle in the Trinidad and Tobago Context. Okay, so it's pre-recorded, so uh, I think, Nicholas, you could do that up now. Hello, my name is Bupendra Maharaj, and today I am presenting some research titled A Real World Energy and Cost Comparison Between an Electric Vehicle and a Petrol Vehicle in the Trinidad and Tobago Context. This was done by myself and Dr. Graham King with the University of the West Indies. The aim of this research was to assess the potential benefits of increasing the amount of electric vehicles in Trinidad and Tobago. The transport sector of Trinidad and Tobago has been historically dominated by oil-based fuels and combustion vehicles. And it is known that these combustion vehicles has their drawback in terms of polluting elements. Now with the case of electric vehicles, there are benefits of no tailpipe emissions as well as reducing the dependency on non-renewable sources of energy. However, electric vehicles has their drawbacks in terms of battery disposal concerns, restricted range and high cost. Electric vehicles have increased in popularity in countries such as Norway, China and California. Therefore, this brings us to an important question as to what is Trinidad and Tobago's position on electric vehicles? And therefore, this research would help determine that answer. The methodology involved using a representative driving cycle and the modeling of the electric vehicle and internal combustion vehicle. These two would help provide the analysis for this research. And without going into too much detail of the driving cycle development, it involved a planned route which incorporated a highway and suburban section. And in each section, micro trips were selected and combined similar to established driving cycle construction. And the representative driving cycles can be seen here. So for the highway section, the distance was approximately 17.1 and the speed was 51.1 kilometers per hour while the suburban section was a distance of 9.7 kilometers and a speed of 25.2 kilometers per hour. In the modeling of both vehicle types, the first stage was the vehicle selection stage. And based on keeping key parameters control, as well as considering the availability in Trinidad and Tobago, the Hyundai Ionic Electric and the Hyundai Elantra was selected. The second step involved data collection, where 12 actual drive cycles were recorded with an OBD adapter. Here, the same trips were recorded for both vehicles. The third step involved model development, and both models were developed in MATLAB, allowing the vehicles to be simulated over any drive cycle for energy consumption and emissions. In the final stage, in model validation, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, has test drive cycles for rated fuel or energy economy of a vehicle. Therefore, these rated values were compared to the models one shown below. Cross validation was done as well, which used a data set that was not part of the modeling stage. And several samples were simulated with the real drive cycles and fuel flow rate and energy transfers that were recorded for each vehicle. These were compared to the parameters log during driving. Results for the internal combustion engine simulation with the Trinidad and Tobago driving cycles for the highway and suburban section can be seen below with graphs of fuel flow rate versus time. 
and here we can see large clusters for the highway sections and large peaks for the suburban sections. Similarly, the electric vehicle simulation with the Trinidad and Tobago driving cycles were computed and here we can see the energy transfer versus time for both the highway and suburban section and we notice negative values which indicate the regenerative braking within the electric vehicle system. This table compares the difference in energy of the cycles combined. We see that the electric vehicle is about 80% more efficient than its combustion counterpart. To determine what the electric driving range in Trinidad and Tobago is expected to be, from the vehicular specifications of both vehicles, we know both energy capacities. Also, we know what the combined representative distance is for the Trinidad and Tobago driving cycle. Therefore, we can use the previous energy consumption table data to give a better range of what both vehicles are expected to be in kilometers as calculated here. The electric vehicle range is calculated to be 193 kilometers while the internal combustion vehicle range is expected to be 596 kilometers. A well-to-wheel analysis was done and the well-to-wheel analysis by Curran et al. 2014 provided estimates for the well-to-tank stage of the analysis in this research and the simulated results with the Trinidad and Tobago driving cycle provides the tank-to-wheel portion of this analysis. The two combined provides the full well-to-wheel analysis for electric vehicles in Trinidad and Tobago. The results can be seen in this table for the internal combustion vehicle powered by crude oil and the electric vehicle powered by natural gas, as in the case of Trinidad and Tobago. Now in both, now in both the tank to wheel and well to tank stage, we can see electric vehicle savings. And in the total well to wheel, we do see energy savings as well as emissions savings. So based on a survey conducted on a driving population for Trinidad and Tobago, the average weekly mileage was found to be about 342 kilometers. This gives an estimated annual mileage of 17,800 kilometers. And from the previous result, of the well-to-wheel analysis, the emissions per kilometer is known, which implies the annual carbon dioxide savings per vehicle is about 2.15 tons of CO2. So if an assumption is made that about 70,000 vehicles are currently swapped with full electric vehicles, the annual carbon dioxide savings would be around 150 and 500 tons of CO2, which is about 9% of Trinidad and Tobago's nationally determined contribution towards the Paris Agreement. Using the previous results, the cost of ownership comparison can be calculated for the internal combustion vehicle and electric vehicle for a five-year period. The total energy cost for the electric vehicle is significantly less than the internal combustion engine vehicle. Therefore, the cumulative cost for the electric vehicle was found to be less than the internal combustion vehicle. For in conclusion, the well-to-wheel electric vehicle energy usage and carbon dioxide emissions are 52% less than internal combustion engine vehicles. Also, an assumption of 10% electric vehicles adoption could lead to a 9% contribution towards Trinidad and Tobago's Paris Agreement's pledge. And 
the electric vehicle's cost of ownership is estimated to be approximately 8% cheaper than internal combustion vehicles over a five-year period. And last but most importantly, electric vehicle adoption in Trinidad and Tobago would lead to an overall reduction in emissions and pollution. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank everyone for listening. All right, that was uh, fantastic there. Um, now, Opentra is not available, but we have the second author, which is uh, Dr. Graham King. All right, and um, we, so you will be able to feel some questions now. And um, uh, actually, uh, we have a, a very interesting question here by Trevor Thompson. Uh, he, he was thinking along the same lines as myself, I was going to ask this question, right? Uh, will you be comparing the EV versus CNG vehicles? Because um, uh, the government is, is uh, pushing uh, CNG a lot and it's a lot of cost savings um, at, at the tank, right? But um, uh, does that add up to um, long-term uh, savings, um, you know, when compared to the EV? Okay, uh, thanks. Yeah, I just switched my hat. And um, so the, uh, in terms of the CNG, yeah, that's an important policy issue. Um, but this one, we have done some initial comparisons. We're not quite ready to publish those and put them out yet. Um, partly because we need to validate the models and, and that kind of thing. Um, but the question or the, the question surrounding CNG versus electric uh, goes beyond just um, the sort of uh, cost uh, of running the, the two vehicles because um, the CNG, uh, the, 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 a number of CNG OEM vehicles, which are vehicles which come that are directly produced by manufacturers as opposed to ones that are being converted, is quite limited. Um, there's actually only one OEM passenger car um, on the market in Trinidad right now, which is the, the Honda City. Um, whereas electric vehicles, um, you know, there's uh, a kind of massive um, boost or boom in the number of electric vehicles that are being made available by manufacturers, mainstream manufacturers, as well as the likes of Tesla and so on. So the trajectory of the two technologies is quite different. I would say um, from a policy point of view, uh, I think there's room for both of them in Trinidad and Tobago going forward, not suggesting that EVs will be the ubiquitous solution. In fact, um, I think in our presentation, Bupendra pointed out that we were assuming a 10% penetration um, over you know, approximately the next 10 years or so. So we're not assuming that everybody uh, will take up EVs, but I think it's definitely an important part of the equation. And um, in terms of energy consumption, it is still more, a more effective use of the natural gas than using the natural gas as CNG in the vehicle directly. And part of the reason for that is that there's a hidden loss with CNG fueling, which is the compression of the CNG at the gas station, um, which is actually a quite a high energy uh, process and is not often taken into account when you're considering how much, um, uh, how much energy is being used. Okay, so um, you know, the, so you, you don't have any plans and, um, doing any further studies with uh, the CNG then? Oh yeah, well, we've got that underway. Uh, it's just that we're not quite ready to publish it yet. Okay, uh, and you know, j just another point, um, the, the CNG costs uh, in Trinidad, is it subsidized? It is subsidized, yes. Okay, so what, what's, and, and did you all work with the true cost um, uh, when you did this study of the fuel? We, when we were looking at the electricity price, we used the highest band retail price for electricity for charging. So okay. that's the retail, not the, uh, which is subsidized. I think even the highest band is slightly subsidized. Okay, all right, cool. All right, um, yeah, so we just had a couple other questions online here, right? Um, uh, Latita, uh, she wanted to find out if it was uh, hybrids or full EVs. Right, and I it's think it was full EVs, right? Yeah, full EVs. Right, and Trevor is asking, uh, will the well-to-wheel comparison show up the loss? 
Uh, it should do, yeah. Um, depends whether that's factored into the model, but that should basically shut the loss, yeah. Okay. All right, great. All right, Graham. Um, I think uh, we 